Friends, welcome to another Fireside Chat for Wednesday, January 20th, 2021. I want to thank my wife Esther for helping produce this Fireside Chat. And a special thanks to all of you for welcoming us into your homes and into your hearts. We were welcomed with what is many people's favorite hymn, Blessed Be the Tie That Binds. I know it is one of my favorites. And the history is charming and inspiring. The words of this beloved church hymn actually began as a poem written by 26-year-old Reverend John Fawcett as he was about to move. He wrote, Blessed be the tie that binds our hearts in Christian love. That fellowship of kindred minds is like to that above. Wayne's Gate Church was a very poor and humble congregation and had been Reverend Fawcett's very first charge as an ordained minister. But in his seven years of ministering to that humble congregation, he had grown a tremendous reputation as a preacher and counselor and pastor. So much so that a very large and prestigious congregation wanted to hire him. But as he and his wife were about to move and were loading their wagon, they were overcome with the love that they felt for their parishioners. And so Reverend Fawcett right then and there said, Stop! Unload the wagons. We are staying. And staying he did for the next 54 years in that little church in Waynesgate, which became famous and thriving thanks to Reverend Fawcett. Why, even King George III wished Reverend Fawcett to be his own personal chaplain, but Fawcett refused. He said, a person's wealth consists not in the abundance of possessions, but in the abundance of love that they share with others. And friends, this fireside chat takes place on Inauguration Day here in the United States. And may our whole country be filled with that blessed tie that binds us together. Amen. Speaking of ties that bind us, here are some of the announcements for what is upcoming here in the life of Dorset Church. As stated a couple of weeks hence, uh, we have resumed our Wednesday evening Bible studies starting at 5 p.m. and they are continuing on the Zoom platform. Uh, we will be sending all of the typical Bible study participants the link. But if you want to join in and you haven't yet, just call the church and we'll be glad to uh, facilitate your participation. Per usual, I will be leading our communal prayer. And then Reverend Holly Ross is our guest facilitator and she will continue our exploration of the book of Esther, which is indeed interesting and uh, enlightening. On Friday mornings, we continue our winter book study, that which helps us to get through the, the chilly, dark months of the winter. And this year we are reading the book entitled Everything Happens for a Reason by Kate Bowler. We gather at 9.30 
in the morning on Zoom, and last week we had a very successful experience. If you wish copies of the book, they are available in the office at $12, and simply call 867 2260 to reserve your copy or to get on and participate for our Friday morning book study. Uh, our Minister of Music, Tom Salmon, has done all that he possibly can to enrich our lives with music ever since we've uh, been stricken with the pandemic, and he's added to his creativity with a mini concert series on Facebook Live every Monday at noon. So tune in, make con comments, and watch anytime. With the heightening level of COVID-19 here in the, in the state of Vermont, uh, the Dorset Church has decided to cancel the free community takeout dinners because it requires uh, a fairly healthy number in the kitchen at the same time for long durations. And so the better part of wisdom had us cancel that until more people have received their vaccine and the numbers start to go down once again. This coming Sunday, January 24th, is our annual Kirken of the Tartans Sunday. So our worship service will be spiced with a variety of poetry by Robbie Burns, the Poet Laureate of Scotland. And we will also be blessing the different heritage fabrics so I am uh, preparing you to get out a fabric that represents your heritage, and it doesn't have to be Scottish at all. There is a fabric for almost every culture across this globe, and we hope that you will be able to find a fabric that represents your heritage and receive a blessing of it as a part of this Sunday's service. And we are coming up on the season of nominating for new church leaders. And if anyone is interested in serving on a board or a committee, we would love to have you contact the office. And we will try to um, pair you with uh, a leadership position that appeals to your best gifts and energies and inclinations. So I want to share with you this homily for Fireside Chat, January 20th, 2021. Today is Inauguration Day for the 46th President of the United States of America. And President Biden will have the daunting task of uniting our country in the midst of our woeful unrest. And I certainly hope that the Christian Church in America will do everything that it possibly can to help that cause of unity. Friends, unity is not just good for our country. It is a sacred obligation, especially for Christians. In one of Jesus' last prayers that he shared as he sadly contemplated leaving his disciples behind, he said this, that they may all be one as you, Father, are one in me and I am in you. Jesus dearly needed us to find that oneness, so much so that he said, so that the world might believe that you, O oh God, sent me. Our unity proves the divinity of Jesus' mission among us. Unity is a part of our faithfulness to our Lord. The problem is that many Christian Americans think unity means uniformity. 
They want the nation to think like them, be like them, vote like them, look like them. But true Christian unity doesn't mean uniformity. It is meant as a togetherness in the midst of diversity. And nothing in the Holy Scripture celebrates this difference between unity and uniformity better than the story of Pentecost. From the book of Acts, chapter 2. When the day of Pentecost had come, they, the disciples, were all together in one place. When suddenly from heaven, like the sound of rushing wind, God's Holy Spirit filled them and the entire house. And they were possessed with the capability of speaking in languages not of their native tongue. And because of the holiday, Jerusalem was filled with foreigners, Galileans, Parthenians, Medes, Elamites, Mesopotamians, Judeans, Cappadocians, Egyptians, Libyans, Cretans, Arabs of all kinds. And everyone became amazed and bewildered because the disciples spoke so that each foreigner understood in his own native tongue. The Holy Spirit of God facilitates a melting pot community. It blesses those who reach out to people of difference. It rewards those who seek unity amidst diversity. Certainly it has rewarded the Dorset congregation with more than a dozen interracial, interfaith families who make up our church family. So certainly melting pot, but maybe also mixing bowl. There's the cute story about the church men's group. As they were about to start their monthly breakfast, they stopped so that the pastor could offer up grace. But before he began, an old farmer spoke out, Reverend, I'd like to say the blessing this morning. Well, the minister was thrilled, thinking at long last that he'd inspired his laity and began equipping the saints, and so he gladly said, go ahead. So the farmer began, Lord, you know how much I hate ground buckwheat. At that, the pastor lifted his bowed head and wondered where this prayer was headed. The old farmer continued, and Lord, you know how much I hate lard. Now the pastor was worried, but the old farmer just continued, and Lord, you know how much I hate buttermilk, but Lord, when all these things that I hate are all mixed together, they sure do make for great pancakes. And you know how much I love pancakes. And so, Lord, I lay my trust upon thee, that according to your great wisdom and love, you will mix us together like these pancakes, and we will all learn to love it. If the Bible provides a recipe for how best to mix together, I think we find it in the story of the Pentecost. First, it says, the recipe starts by filling to the brim a cup of commonality. As the story begins, the Holy Spirit blew everywhere and on everyone, filling the entire house and spilling over out into the streets. The spirit of commonality has certainly blown upon the United States and all the world thanks to this COVID pandemic. And yet, despite that commonality, so many have focused instead on personal agendas and local issues and party politics. 
and like a rushing wind. Commonality has blown upon us all with the challenges of global climate change, and yet many believe we can isolate ourselves and practice exceptionalism and live for me, myself, and mine alone. But holy unity flows from an unbounded and brimming spirit of commonality. A second part of the recipe of holy unity is learning to speak so as to be understood. Speech is crucial to the pursuit of unity. Here in America, our freedom of speech has become so sacred that anyone can say almost anything and it'll still be okay. But when it comes to holy unity, how we speak really matters. The words we choose, the names we call, the rhetoric we create can breed understanding or it can build walls and incite division. It all depends on one's mindset from the moment they open their mouth. Friends, no, we don't have to lie or withhold our truth, but how we speak it, do we speak it in love? That is the speech that breeds understanding. And after, after speaking to be understood, the third ingredient in the recipe of holy unity is hearing to understand. We must learn how to hear. We must learn how to listen. Right now our nation, from the media on down to citizenry, is in full throttle persuasion mode. Armed with loaded ideology and emboldened with bubble think, few people try to understand. Instead, in the midst of many a conversation, we hear what someone says with our radar finely tuned for finding those talking points with which we disagree. Hungry for a debate, we are primed for a fight. But holy unity depends upon us hearing each other with the goal of understanding. And so to close now more than ever, dear friends, the Holy Spirit is sending us all into our spiritual kitchens to start mixing the recipe for holy unity. You must start with a healthy measure of commonality. Then add that bonding agent of speaking to be understood. And then you add that faithful leavening of hearing to understand. Friends, happy and faithful mixing so that our nation can taste and see that the Lord is good. And so let me close with this prayer. Let us pray. Honor your government, so the Bible says. So teach us, O God, how to faithfully display that honor. Let us hold up in ardent and hopeful prayer President Joe Biden and his administration as they seek to unite our nation, to love justice and repel evil, and to have the compassion of Christ for the least and the lost, the alone and the ailing, and those who most need liberation of body and soul. Visit your grace and protection upon our nation's capital this day and for the days to come. Quell all violence. Quiet our national anger with the hope of building back better from the tumult that was and the presence of our higher angels. Help us as well, O Lord, to honor government with our loyalty when deserved and our honesty when required. 
Help us reconcile our patriotism with our discipleship to Jesus so that finally your God, your, your grace, O oh God, shall be shed upon America. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with each and every one of us today and forevermore. Amen.